Hi, and welcome back to Unlock Your Bible, the show where the Bible is taught in a plain and clear way for all to understand. Again, my name is Ron Knight. I'm a pastor of Twin Cities Grace Fellowship in Roseville, Minnesota, and I ask that you get your King James Bible, your pen and a piece of paper to take notes, and join us for our look at the book of Galatians. My friend, for the past many weeks, we've been studying through verse by verse the book of Galatians. Now, the book of Galatians is a book written by the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul is important in your scriptures because he's God's spokesman for you today. You know, God had a program in time past to the nation of Israel. And in the books of Genesis through Acts, those, those instructions were given by God to the nation of Israel. But in Acts chapter 9, God changed the program through Israel's unbelief. And he, he, he saved a man named Saul of Tarsus, made him the Apostle Paul, and gave him a grace message for today. And we'll talk more about this, but just so you'll know, and then after this program that God is operating today is over, God will continue his program with the nation of Israel. Now, my friend, when we talk about the book of Galatians, we're speaking about a book written for the present. Uh, in the books of Romans through Philemon, those 13 books of the Apostle Paul, it's our doctrine for today. So as we've been looking through the, the book of Galatians, we're seeing that God puts a difference between the law that he gave to Israel and the grace message he gave to us Gentiles today. You know, my friend, there was a time where God dealt with man based on a performance-based acceptance system. That's what the law means. It means as how you performed under these, these commandments was how God would accept you. If you performed under this law, and, and as sinners, you know you would fail if you didn't keep all the Ten Commandments and the other commandments, you had to offer a sacrifice in Israel. If you offered the sacrifice as a covering for your sin, God forgave you. He accepted you based on that blood sacrifice. But if you didn't, he would not. Well, today, in the, grace, in the dispensation of grace, God's grace is not performance-based acceptance. It's faith-based acceptance. Today, God doesn't accept works as far as to be justified. Today, your justification is in the cross work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul explains to these believers here that they were saved by the cross work of Christ and they are they're sanctified by the cross of Christ. The law had no, no, no dealings in their salvation and the law didn't have anything to do with their sanctification. So we left off in chapter 3, look at verse 16. I'm going to read a few verses and we'll look in, in the passage, okay? In Galatians chapter 3, look at verse 16. Now to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. He saith, and not to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non-effect. Now, in a couple of past, the last couple of sessions, we looked at these passages. Paul says that the law that God gave Israel came after the promise that God made to their father Abraham. You know, my friend, in Romans chapter 4, Paul says that Abraham was justified as a Gentile. You know, Abraham, before God gave him the covenant of circumcision, the cutting off of the foreskin of the flesh, he justified Abraham. Why? Because Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. 430 years later, God adds the law to Abraham's seed, the nation of Israel. But God never forgot his covenant with Abraham. And that covenant was a covenant that God himself made. Abraham had nothing to do with it. In fact, in Genesis 15, when, when God makes, makes the covenant with Abraham, he put Abraham to sleep so that Abraham had nothing to do with it, okay? Now, we saw that in past sessions. And Paul says just because God added the, the, the law to Abraham's seed Israel, it didn't change the covenant that he made by, with Abraham by faith. <clears throat> now, Look at verse 17. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul or change that it should make the promise of non-effect. See, God's promise is immutable, okay? We saw that in the book of Hebrews last time, that when God says something, he's going to follow through with it. And just because the law was added to show that, and we're going to see why, because of Israel's transgressions of why it was added, to teach them that they were sinners. It didn't change God's promise, okay? Now, look at verse 18. 
For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. You see, when God made that covenant promise with Abraham, he promised that he would bless him and make him a blessing, make his name great, and through him and his seed, he'd have a multiplied seed, a nation. And through that nation would all the families of the earth be blessed, okay? And that God, God promised Abraham a, a land, some land in that, in that covenant. It's going to be that land of Palestine, the land of Canaan, the land of Israel, where Israel is today, okay? And in there, that's their inheritance. You see here, my friend, I got earthly kingdom. Israel's hope was an earthly kingdom. That's their inheritance, okay? Now, when God changed the program in Acts 9, raising up the apostle Paul, now God says that there's a heavenly inheritance, a heavenly kingdom. Now, the way you become a part of this is not being a circumcised Jew. Although Jews can be a part of this, Jew and Gentile, through the cross work of Christ, by believing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross to pay for your sins, through faith in his blood, you become part of the body of Christ. You become part of God's heavenly kingdom. You know, Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And what God did, he created a government in the heavens. He only spoke about through the Apostle Paul. And then a government in the earth, which he spoke about all through the Bible. Israel, their inheritance will be that earthly kingdom. But you and I, as members of the body of Christ, if you've trusted Christ, we're going to inherit the heavenly kingdom, okay? We're going to work for God up there. But it, it's an inheritance nonetheless, isn't it? It's just not an earthly inheritance. One day when God has finished this program, he will again deal with Israel and give them that earthly kingdom through the Lord Jesus Christ. But here, Paul says in verse 18, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise. See, if God gave that inherit, inheritance to Abraham and his seed through the law, then that would disannul the promise, right? That God wouldn't use the law as the, as the basis of the, the blessing because he had already promised Abraham 430 years before the law that he would bless him through faith, okay? Look at this. Look at verse 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. My friend, Paul says that what's the reason for the law? Why, if God already had a promise with Abraham, would he give the law 430 years later to the nation of Israel? Well, remember what I told you. The law is performance-based acceptance. 